and welcome to PM Creations. Thank you for joining me today. Um, today I'm going to do a, a different type of video for you guys. Today I'm actually going to be sharing some of the art books that I have recently acquired. I guess it's like an arts book haul. Uh, as, as well as just to show you all the art books that I have so far at this point in time uh, in my life. Um, so a, a bit of a story. Um, I have taken art in all five years of my high school career and I have not once been required to purchase any uh, art theory books uh, in high school or any uh, grade actually and that's kind of unfortunate but at the same time um, I think part of it is because uh, in high school uh, when our teachers uh, needed us to purchase something, it ended up usually being like an art kit of some sort. So something with like paint brushes, uh, with like a note, a pad to draw, uh, draw and sketch in, uh, like an art book. Um, uh, sometimes paints, so things like that. So those things we had to buy ourselves. Um, so I guess the teachers, when they had to choose between a textbook versus the materials, they opted for the materials obviously because you learn by doing in art class. Um, which And so at the same time like I never felt like I missed anything because uh, everything the teachers just taught us verbally or they maybe like photocopied something from a textbook that they have to kind of teach us if they need to give us some theory and stuff like that. So I never felt like I was missing something. Um, and it's also funny because considering how much I love art and have done art, I've never even thought for myself personally to purchase art theory books, which I thought was kind of interesting now that I think about it in retrospect. I'm like, why didn't I ever purchase art theory books before? Or like uh, art books, art working books. Um, but it's okay. I mean, this is life. I never felt like I really missed anything because I was actually doing the artwork. So, uh, But now that I'm kind of getting back into it, um, I feel like I need to, I feel like I missed something there that I want to kind of practice and uh, to be able to practice, I need to see those examples, I need to, to practice with uh, using examples and books uh, that teach art, uh, basically, just to kind of get myself like going, thinking in different ways, learning new things about uh, different mediums, uh, mediums that I'm interested in and stuff like that. Uh, so I'm excited uh, to do this today because I'm going to go through the the books that I've purchased recently uh, as well as a book that I've always, that I've had, uh, the only book I would say, one of the only books that I've had, um, that's kind of teaching like art theory, basically teaching art. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to say. Had I, I'm sure, had I taken art in like undergrad, for example, I probably would have had to take buy some kind of textbook uh, that relates to art and theory and and mediums and stuff like that. Uh, but I didn't take art uh, in undergrad, so um, I guess that maybe if I had taken that continuously, then maybe I would have been have accumulated uh, art books by now. Um, but at the same time, I love books in general, and even though I've never had like art theory books, I've always kept books that I found where I really liked the artwork in it. Um, so, uh, for example, I have a few um, comic books that I really like uh, that I've always kept. Uh, I have uh, some like story books and stuff like that, which I kind of enjoy the artworks in. Um, and maybe one day, another time, I will show you those that are kind of like, they're ins inspiring in a way and kind of gets my creative juices flowing if I if I watch, if I look at those uh, pictures. But today I'm just going to focus on these things. So um, in total I have five books that I'm going to go through today uh, and four of them are new books, new for the most part, uh, books and one that I've always had. Um, so let me begin with, um, actually, uh, let me just start by saying uh, I kind of got into purchasing books 
recently. I've been thinking about it so since last month, uh, since March and now April. That's when I started kind of accumulating some books. And there are so many other books that I really would like to uh, purchase, to learn from. But um, yeah, these, these are the ones that I've purchased so far. So I'm going to start off with um, the book that I've had for many, many, many years. Um, this is like the only textbook, theory book, that I've received uh, in my time in high school. Um, but uh, essentially I won this uh, as an art award. It was part of a, a package uh, of an award. It came with like an acrylic um, palette, a, a, a knife, and um, and I believe uh, also like a little canvas and stuff like that along with this, which I thought was really fun. And I've always kept it because it was really the only book that I've received relating to art theory. Um, and I've never thrown it out. So I've had this for a long time. So it's called Acrylics Master Translucent Techniques for Landscape Painting. And it's by R. Bradford Johnson. Um, and I actually tried practicing a few of these paintings. Um, if I get a chance to take a picture or something like that, I might just show it to you guys over here. But I didn't I didn't fully finish some of them. I think I tried like two of them, but I didn't go through all the whole book. Uh, I stopped kind of part way. Um, and I, I think I'm going to continue to do more studies from this book and maybe I'll share it with you guys uh, on YouTube. Uh, but essentially I really like this book because it goes through uh, like co the colors that you would get in um, acrylic paintings, the types of brushes, uh, t different techniques uh, and tips and stuff like that. And it comes with um, also uh, drawings that we can try to um, copy and study from. So for example, this painting, they give us uh, like the simple drawing version of it so we can you know kind of transfer it over using the grid technique here's the grid technique that I mentioned before um, using the grid technique transferring it over to another piece of canvas and then kind of following along and it goes through step by step uh, like the foliage and stuff like that it goes through uh, the grass the underpainting how to get this like wonderful effect uh, as well and so it goes through quite a bit on a step-by-step -step basis. And it's really only, when I was younger, I guess when I was in grade 12, I didn't really, even though I kind of understood it, I tried to just follow the picture. I didn't try to focus on actually the techniques that it um, provided. But just now, recently, I'm, I'm starting to understand it a, a lot better and I'm so much more curious about the techniques. And I'm, I'm really excited to try this again to continue uh, doing some studies with it to kind of improve my acrylic painting uh, techniques. So this is one of the books that I've always had and I am going to, uh, and I, I'm happy that I got to uh, show it to you guys today. So that's one that I've already had. Now these are the four that I've purchased new. I bought three books in March and one book uh, in April so far. Um, out of the three books in March, one of them uh, all of them are, three of them are new, one of them is a uh, used uh, version of it. Uh, but um, I'm so glad I got it though, so I'll go through each one separately. So this one, uh, it's called, it's the first book that I got uh, around the beginning of March. It's called Draw 100 Things to Make You Happy, Step-by-Step -step Drawings to Nourish Your Creative Self. And it's by... Um, a famous person, uh, Christopher Hart. He has a lot of, uh, you know, books that are like uh, tutorial type books, uh, which I really like. And I think I'm going to purchase a few more uh, of his books. Um, I really like the fact that it, it even says, you know, more than seven million books sold, best-selling author. So, you know, it, it's it's for a reason, I'm sure. Um, and. What I like about this book is the first thing is when I saw it, it, it drew my attention because draw 100 things to make you happy. I'm all for that. Um, and I like drawing anyway. So, and I like the type of drawing, that the type of image. It's so like, 
it's not like a super uh, like it's not realistic or anything like that but it's like simple and yet very nice something about it like cartoony i really enjoy and um it has some good good uh images to play around with and i really like the way uh, he has done this because he i hope you can see this he breaks it down really well like very simple um pieces of the body and then he adds on layers and layers and then you fi finally get the final product. Um, so it makes it like we, anyone can do it. Um, and it's really nice. Like he has some really nice uh, images uh, as well. Um, he even has animals in it. Very simplified. Uh, and it makes anyone like uh, it makes it enjoyable when it's simple like that I feel like when it's simple it makes me think like okay that's not too hard I can attempt this and uh, even if I have like only five minutes to do something I'll be like okay you know what I'm gonna try this and then I'm gonna do it and then I end up with that product which is really nice and um, I think it's really good especially for a beginner and he also does he also does some scenes as well uh, for this so for for example this one He, it's not just people and animals, he also focuses on a little, like, some sceneries as well. Uh, like this. Really cool. So yeah, so I'm really, I really like this book so far and I'm excited to do, um, do a lot of studies with it. I actually did attempt one of these paintings as well. I tried this one. Uh, and I'll show you real quick. I will show it to you really quickly. I practiced it. I, st I did a study with it. And it's it didn't take too long. It was quite, you know, quite easy. I'm, uh, I'm very happy about it. It's very cool. Um, So yeah, and I'm gonna, and I did a, another one as well, and I'm gonna keep doing it, uh, keep uh, trying different uh, images out of it, and you know, practice uh, getting my hand used to the way to quickly draw something like a character like this. Uh, and I really think they're so cute; they're so nice. Okay, so that's that. The next book I purchased, uh, this book actually, I I got it on Amazon. Um, but it came from the United Kingdom. It came all the way from England. Uh, and it came quite fast. I'm, I'm surprised. But it's great that I was able to get this book. It was hard to get the new, um, the new version. Like, it was hard to get an, a new copy. Uh, so the version that was available was a used version. And, but, but this was, like, used new. Uh, like very close to being brand new uh, and yes there's nothing wrong with the book there's some like uh, it looks a bit like browner in terms of like not brown but just like um, you know like white new paper versus like a bit used um, older looking paper it looks a bit like that but it, it, I mean I think it's like you know free loved which I'm like so I don't mind that at all um, and I really like this book I was really excited for it so it's called Mastering the Art of Watercolor and it's by Wendy uh, Jalbert and Ian Sidaway and it, it has like a list of things that it kind of goes through like mixing paint brush strokes gouache masking out glazing wet into wet dry brush painting Washes using resist, sponging, light to dark, and scrafito. Scr 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 Evidently, clearly, I don't know what that is. But I'm going to learn now that I have this book. Um, and you can learn it too. Uh, maybe I can tell you what it is once I find out. Um, but essentially, it is a, a great, it feels like a very good resource to have. Um, I'll quickly show you. It has some nice images, like such good reference, references, not just references, I would say like um, inspirations even. 
and the good thing about this is uh, so it has a table of contents like it goes from the very basic uh, of things like you know getting started what uh, paints there are what types of paints um, uh, so like a uh, cube um, the box pa uh, paints versus like the tubes um, and stuff like that and the different types of colors different types of paper um, all the items and then uh, it kind of goes into a light to dark how in watercolor we're supposed to go from light to dark because uh, it's um, a way of building up the image right if you start from dark it's hard to go light so much with watercolors as opposed to like acrylics for example so it really goes into like the techniques and how to start and stuff like that um, it is a very valuable resource I, I think and I'm excited I only just um, started reading up on it but I'm going to continue reading it I, like when I start reading it I can continue to read it uh, uh, for a while without putting it down because it's it's interesting and it's for me personally it's exciting to learn these different things that I've always kind of known but didn't know it in words for example you know what I mean I don't know if that makes any sense but like I knew the basic idea behind it but I didn't know why or I didn't know how to describe it um, but this goes into all that uh, in wor words stippling sponging different kinds of uh, different ways of doing it. I'm just going to quickly go through some of the other pages. Like even this. Um, crashing waves. So this is a very good one. It shows kind of sh how you come up with it from beginning to the end. So you draw the, the picture and it has um, what you need to do, like what colors to use and stuff like that. And what each layers you need to add on to it to finally get this and what techniques to use to get that so it it even has spots where you can go step by step on how to achieve this final result which looks and it's not just like one to five steps it's like 20 steps and it looks beautiful at the end and it does that with many things like lake with reflections so it's very useful it's not just uh, it's not just a resource of information, it's also a resource of practicing uh, to be able to practice as well, which I really like. And I'm excited to try this, like look at that. And just, just looking at the picture makes me so excited I want to go and paint something, which is, tell me if you feel this way too when you look at something really pretty and, and a drawing artist out there. If you see something and you just have this urge and motivation to go and draw something or paint something, I get that a lot. And this one, definitely gonna try this, uh, study this one. Um, I'm excited for that actually, looking forward to it. Um, animals, cats, otters, like it's, it's amazing. I'm so glad, like, I'm so glad that I was able to purchase this because I can't find, I couldn't find like the, the new version of it, but I don't care. And it would have been like more, much more expensive. This was um, affordable it has everything and it came all the way from London how great is that I, I like London I just have a thing for London I don't know why but um, not London but just like England England at large and um, so yeah so this is one of the great books that I purchased that I'm really happy about that I want to share with you guys okay so the next one the next book I purchased uh, near the end of March is this one, and it's called um, <clears throat> Ready to Paint in 30 Minutes. Can you see this? Ready to Paint in 30 Minutes, Trees and Woodlands in Watercolor. And it just says build your skills with quick and easy painting projects. And it's by uh, either Jeff Kersey or Geoff Kersey. And the thing I love about this is the fact that it has this. It says tracings included 32 step-by-step -step projects. 32, that's a lot of projects. And actually, I've never seen anything like this uh, before. I mean, the acrylics, um, the acrylics book kind of alludes to that where you, and the watercolor book where 
you can follow step by step but this one actually has uh, tracings which is something I've never seen before and I think it's a very cool concept um, so so it, it comes with this like it's like wax paper almost um, and it has like tracing number one tracing number two three four etc so the idea is that you um, you first like draw on, uh, using a pencil you kind of um, yeah draw lines on it uh, in pencil and you put it on top of your uh, paper that you want to paint in and then you kind of draw on the other side so that the image gets transferred over to the watercolor paper and then you can use it to follow along with their tutorials that they have on the in the book and I really like this uh, I like this concept I've never seen it before and it has the fact that it has 32 is uh, amazing it's great that means I have so many to you know uh, study with to practice with um, and I'm actually thinking, uh, I mean, let me know if you guys like to see this. I'm going to try a few of these and do like a, um, studies maybe on YouTube so you guys can take a look at it and see, and then we can kind of have fun with it and see like what we come up with, right? Um, so this has beautiful, beautiful watercolor paintings. Uh, and the good thing about this one as well, it's also it starts with that basics, uh, the basics of watercolor. Um, it goes into like the types of paints, um, but the only thing is like it's not as thorough as the other book, but like this one's like very basic, very simple, to the point. Uh, because most of the, the whole idea behind this book I think is to get that practice, hence like all those tracing papers. Um, and then they just you know, it, it tells you to look at the images and it gives you like different um, the concepts like when you look at this you see this and this uh, and stuff like that so for example um, maybe I can kind of quickly read this small thing about this uh, winter image so it says uh, Hickling Broad Norfolk the bare winter trees in this scene are as important a part of the composition as the boats and the water. So it has like boats and water and stuff. I don't know if you can really see it, but there it is. The largest, most prominent tree in the middle distance on the left-hand side establishes a strong L-shaped composition. That's this one. The other trees recede into the distance, gradually getting smaller and lighter in tone until we reach the far distant ones, which are just small misty shapes. So it, it tells you what you're looking at basically, but it tells you more than what you would normally notice maybe at first, right? Um, the image, the, the, the tree is the main thing. But then you still see some trees like receding into the end ends that you can hardly hardly see. So like here, it just focuses on that, and then eventually um, we start with practice. So this one's the winter tree, and it tells you the tracing that we are going to need is tracing number one, and then it goes step by step: what brush to use, what water, how much water to use, uh, what technique to use, uh, like dry brush versus uh, wet on wet, and then it kind of tells you step by step how to get this final product. Um, I haven't tried this yet, like I said, I just, um, I got it last month and I've been reading it, uh, but I definitely am going to try, I would like to try all of them, um, and like I said, let me know, I'm going to do, I can do a few studies, I'm thinking of doing a few studies. Uh, of it on YouTube uh, for you guys to enjoy and for me to kind of get keep motivated and keep doing it as well uh, and look at this like it's so pretty I love bridges I don't know something about seeing a bridge and nice trees oh. and mountains I like it all um, but yeah it, it has some nice Oh, and this one. It's one of my favorites. 
because I love cherry blossoms and the colors of it. This is a nice one. I'm excited to try this one. And there's so many. And yeah, and so this is that book. This uh, press, uh, search press, they've done quite a few of this type of um, book. And I, I'm, I'm really like, I've already planned to buy a, a few others as well. But like, look at this, like, ready to paint uh, flowers, watercolors, street scenes, landscapes, boats, and harbors. There are a lot, a lot of books that this um, press is affiliated with, a lot of art books. And it looks like this is really cool. I'm really excited that I purchased this one. I'm really happy with it as well. And uh, the last book that I have to show for, to you guys um, today is this one. It is, I purchased this in, I got this in April. Uh, and it's called Shoujo Fashion Manga Art School. How to Draw Cool Looks and Characters. And it's by Irene Flores. I really like this. I mean, um, I love Japanese anime uh drawings Sailor Moon is one of my like it's my favorite cartoon <laughs> and um, manga is also kind of like uh, you know it's actually very similar same um, and I love these types of characters um, but what I really liked about this book and the reason why I purchased it uh, as well is because uh, first of all like this book, I've seen it uh, on some like reviews and stuff like that, and it had good reviews. Uh, but um, the images are so beautiful. They're inspiring and great references, and um, the, this Miss um, uh, Flores has done a great job with the uh, with this book and the types of work artworks that she uh, does um, the book starts off like for the introduction um, she starts with like the basics as always like the basic equipment the types of uh, pens that are out there that can be used erasers the basics and then something that she uh, that I really like is that she goes into the line weight which makes it big difference so the line weight the difference between a line drawing or uh, an ink drawing that's just like standing in space just like floating in space versus taking up the space and living in the space is the the weight of the line uh, of the pen uh, and and the ink and, and the shading and stuff like that so that really brings out the character to life and um, I'm so glad that she does this at the get-go. Uh, like, you wouldn't normally see... Like, I don't think... I haven't seen... I mean, I don't know... I don't have too many uh, books to kind of re uh, compare the two. But the fact that she actually focuses on that kind of at the get-go um, says a lot. It's a good thing because it's so true. It makes a big difference in your art, right? And I am glad that she did that. And... And yeah, she she shows like how it adds texture, texture places uh, shadows, creates depth, uh, adds the atmosphere. It does a lot of things, and this is so true. And I'm so glad that she did that. So, uh, yeah, thank you, Miss Flores, for doing that. Um, and then you go on to adding color. So it's really cool. I really like this book. The other thing, so it does have a, a basic uh, section on drawing the the body essentially like male versus female uh, side view versus front view back view and stuff like that um, and I, re I really like it it's, it's great to refer to uh, contracted muscles versus like free uh, muscles the knee the hands. This is this is a uh, good one for studying uh, to practice with like different angles of the hand. The feet. How you would draw it. What shapes are incorporated in there, uh, and different angles of the feet, of the foot, I guess. 
and uh, different poses and body types again different poses they're so pretty it just looks so effortless and it makes me want to kind of get my pen pencil out and start drawing um, action poses these are amazing this one's really cool I love it love it okay oh and this one perspective this is very important and very cool um, you have like the bird's eye view the, the warm's eye view um, and she does it with um, you know the basic shapes right so it doesn't just like suddenly go to this you start with where and what level you would have the different parts of the body and then you draw that so it's really cool I'm very excited and looking forward to um, practicing using this book and the techniques and the shapes and stuff like that to work with to kind of figure out um, the more I practice the better I'll get at it especially like something like this it, that would take me a while to figure out that perspective uh, but seeing this makes me feel confident that I can you know attempt it and to be able to get better at that as well <clears throat> oh and this one draw the many faces of your character so if you're drawing a character um, you'd want that person to have kind of a depth of uh, expressions right um, and it's not just always going to be smiling kind of thing so this actually shows it all mocking sad different ways of showing sad like kind of sad up to like really upset um, if you can see that and then um, <clears throat> the next thing is the clothes and this is actually a super useful thing uh, I really like that um, clothing when you draw clothing there are different nuances uh, on a piece of clothing like if you're looking at this you see that it has different um, you know bends and folds and it's like here up here you see the difference right like it fringes and as a result of this fringing there are some lines here so all of that they they try to show that to us in this uh, and and I think she did a really good job at it so um, I'll just show a few real quick like here Look at that, look at the detail. Wow. And like even this, like super cool. This one, yes, please. Um, the way the collar would look, men's, women's. And it's not just like a shirt or blouse. She focuses on a lot of things. She does sweaters, sweatshirts lasers like look at that that how amazing does that look this page is one of my favorites like there's so much detail on this like look at this it's like lacy uh, fabric and hats like I said she goes through a lot of things gloves scarves shoes sneakers all everything heels, boots. These boots are beautiful. The blue one. Look at that. The detail on that thing. So good. And handbags. Umbrellas. Glasses. Everything. And then, she, uh, closer to the end of it, she has just kind of like putting it together almost, like the types of characters, the drama queen, happy-go-lucky, can you see this, like well-balanced person, famed, the solitary, the loner, <laughs> two friends and stuff like that. So she, um, when she was focusing on these ones, I see that she also used the colors that uh, are associated with each, each section, that's very useful. So if I'm trying to recreate this, uh, practice using this, um, I will know the two greens that I'll have to use. Right? Uh, same with the hair, the skin, and stuff like that. So it's super useful. And it gives it from the top 
to the like from the beginning to the end product. It goes through everything. And then you kind of go to like setting the scene essentially which focuses a bit on uh, perspective which is very useful so the different types of perspectives uh, and she actually shows a few examples um, these are all like we can study them we can recreate them following this, these uh, steps essentially right so like that's amazing that's really cool so this uh, is the final book that I purchased and by no means is this the end. I'm going to purchase s so many more books. I love books in general and I, I just feel like I it's time for me to start purchasing uh, art books uh, and add them to my collection of books because I want to develop my art a lot more and um, practice a lot more and you know and part of it is to learn what's already out there that you know learn from different people like all these people that have created these books for example they they've mastered something uh, a niche uh, you know a way of drawing uh, they know their the techniques and stuff like that so I really would want to just uh, be able to learn all techniques that I as much techniques as I possibly can um, which a lot like I said a lot of the times there's stuff that I kind of already knew almost like instinctively or maybe from what I've learned from high school um, that now I just kind of know uh, so it kind of reinforces what I've already known I guess um, but it's but there's so much more that I would have not um, been able to kind of uh, experience learns and uh, these books are really like showing me those uh, techniques and stuff like that. I'm so excited to try out all of them um, and improve my craft. Um, so this um, and so for future, I have definitely I have a bunch of books that I'm still have I still have on my cart. All these books I purchased from Amazon, by the way. This one I just got it as a gift. But all the books I have purchased, I got it from Amazon. Um, I could try to find the links to them and put them. I can put the links on my description if you would like to purchase them as well. If you'd like to, you know, um, see what they're all about. Um, I I was going to say I have a, a bunch of other books that I really want to purchase. One of them is definitely the book called Color and Light by James Gurney. I really want to purchase that one because I think I can learn a lot from it. Um, so like um, when I was searching online, even on YouTube, just looking at like book reviews and stuff like that, uh, or very useful books for artists to have, Color and Light comes up quite a bit. It comes up almost like every artist would reference that. Um, and it's a it's for a reason, I'm sure. And even looking at the the pictures and stuff like that online, the techniques that are mentioned there, like it looks like a very useful uh, resource to have. I'm definitely uh, going to purchase that at some point. Um, and there are so many others. Um, there are quite a few. Um, and like I said, I want to purchase a few more of um, Christopher Hart's, Hart's books. Um, but and there are so many others. And another one um, I definitely would like to get is. Um, Drawing Characters, I believe it's what it's called. It's um, Draw with Jazza, Creating Characters, something like that. Um, that's definitely one of the books that I, I would like to purchase uh, one day because I, um, I really like his uh, artworks. I, I watch him on uh, YouTube and he's so good um, at what he does, like the type of uh, art that he creates. Um, and he tries a lot of things, so it's like he's really good at it. So um, that's definitely one of the books I want to purchase. Uh, and there are so many others. I have like a whole wish list slash um, cart, shopping cart, Amazon cart full of art books that I'm going to purchase and I would like to purchase one day. Uh, all in good time. But for the time being, I have these four books 
uh, five books at this point. There is one other book that I have always had, uh, I have had for many years, and I, I don't have it to show it, me show you right now. It's not really an art techniques book, but it's an art history book, and um, it's a thick book. Uh, like it's pretty thick. I had it for art his art history, uh, which I took in undergrad as an elective. Um, but uh, I really like that book, and if I can find the name of that book and link it, uh, I will. Um, it's a good reference in terms of it show is showing the periods in the art history uh, and showing what types of works um, existed. It's a it's a good reference, basically. I would think. But one day, uh, another time, when I have more books and I have that book available with me nearby, I'll show you all, all of it, all of it uh, as well. Um, so that's basically it. These are the books that uh, I wanted to show you guys today. Um, tell me what other books. So I said that I was going to buy a few more books as well. So if you know any books that you found, you know, to be very useful, great references, please let me know uh, in uh, in the comments down below. Uh, and if you like these books, or if you have these books as well, uh, like I said, um, if you'd like to buy these books, I'll, I can put descriptions uh, in the description box. I could put links, sorry, in the description box. And if you like these books, if you have these books, um, feel free to give me a thumbs up and say that you do have them or you like them. Uh, and I would like to see your comments, whatever you have to say as well. Um, other than that, thank you so much for joining me. So today it's not a painting, no drawing, no painting. It's just theory-based um, reference art books that I wanted to share with you guys today. Um, so I'll see everyone next time. Uh, keep painting, keep drawing. Take care, everyone. Bye.